Hey folks, welcome back. In this video we're going to go over free fall and terminal velocity. And these are two concepts which you would have come across at National 5 level. So let's get started. Now to remind ourselves of free fall and terminal velocity, we're going to consider the specific example of a skydiver jumping out of a plane. So imagine a skydiver jumping out of a plane. It shouldn't be a surprise that they will start to accelerate towards the ground due to the influence of gravity alone, i.e. their weight. And when they do this, we say that they are in free fall. So an object is in free fall if it experiences only the force due to gravity acting on it. To help you visualise this a bit better, let's look at a simulation. So we have the skydiver accelerating downwards, so their speed is going to increase, and then eventually their weight downwards becomes balanced by the air resistance upwards. And the air resistance upwards is going to be constantly increasing because the speed of the skydiver is increasing downwards. And it should make sense to you that an object travelling faster through air will experience more air resistance. So as air resistance increases upwards, the weight downwards stays the same, and so eventually the two forces will become balanced. And at this point, the speed of the skydiver is called the terminal velocity. So going back to the notes now, let's break it into parts to see how this works. So as the skydiver accelerates downwards, the air resistance or drag upwards increases. And we said that's because the faster the object moves, it's going to experience more drag or more air resistance. So if we look at this picture, we're starting off with the skydiver in free fall. So as soon as they jump out of the plane, they are in free fall where they only experience the weight downwards. And then as they start to increase in speed, you can see that there is some drag produced. So the drag force starts increasing, the air resistance starts increasing. And it says here, as they accelerate downwards, the air resistance or drag upwards increases. Eventually the forces acting vertically on the skydiver become balanced when the weight equals the drag and they fall at a constant speed. This is called the terminal velocity. So we have that the drag upwards is balanced by the weight downwards and the skydiver will continue to fall at a constant speed. Now they will keep moving at a constant speed unless they do something else like open a parachute. So moving on it says once the parachute is opened, once again the air resistance or drag upwards increases, so speed decreases. And the reason the air resistance or drag upwards increases is because when you open the parachute, there is now a large surface area for the air particles to hit off of, which causes the force upwards to increase. So that means that your speed downwards will decrease again, which is what you want. You don't want to be hitting the ground at the initial constant speed, the terminal velocity that you were doing to begin with. So what happens is that a lower terminal velocity is eventually reached when the vertical force is again become balanced. And to visualise this, I'll show you another simulation. So if I click play here, you should see that the air resistance force upwards will increase until the two forces become balanced, we've got a terminal velocity, and then the skydiver opens their parachute, and you should have seen that large surge or increase in the air resistance there. And then again, the two forces will become balanced eventually. And so you're going to hit the ground at a much safer, lower terminal velocity. But in National 5 Physics and Higher Physics, you need to be aware of what the velocity time graph will look like for this skydiver falling out of the plane. So if we replay this, I'm going to show you the graph this time. So notice that we're increasing in speed, we're accelerating, and then we get a constant speed, terminal velocity. And then there's a rapid decrease in speed, that is when you open the parachute, and then we get a second terminal velocity at this point. And this little drop in speed is just from hitting the ground. So let me show you that again. So we have an acceleration, but it's not a constant acceleration because it's curved. Then we have our terminal velocity, and then we have our opening our parachute, and then the second terminal velocity, and then hitting the ground. So lastly, going back to the notes just to look at the parts of the velocity time graph. So we've got velocity against time. So initially when the skydiver jumps out of the plane, they're going to start accelerating. To begin with, it is a bit of a uniform acceleration, but then it starts to curve off. And that means that it's no longer a uniform acceleration or a constant acceleration, it's now a changing acceleration. And that is because of the changing forces. And so eventually the first terminal velocity is reached here, and that is a constant speed. And when the skydiver opens their parachute, there is a rapid deceleration. Again, this is a curved line, and that is because there are changing forces. So it's not a constant or uniform deceleration, it's changing. And then eventually you reach a much lower second terminal velocity and that's then safe enough to land on the ground without breaking any limbs. That's all for this video folks, I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it one of these, subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.